Hey everyone, welcome to the Mo and O Show. This is episode 4,985 and a half. <laughs> and we are a photography podcast. And uh, my name is Omar Gonzalez. And I'm Mo Morales. And we're happy to have you guys here. Uh, those of you that enjoy photography, those of you that enjoy food, movies, and life. Everyone should enjoy life. <laughs> That's true. If you're not, call me. Yeah. Talk about I'll it. Cheer you up. Okay, we are. Uh, I got a good topic today. Tell I, me I a topic, gonna... Omar. Tell me. All right, so there's this there's a show on Netflix I'm I'm addicted to. It's called uh, Blown Away, I think. What's it about? <laughs> you gonna talk to me or what? What's it about? <laughs> okay, so there's this Netflix show where people glass blow. They have like a a, a theme. Like they tell mm-hmm. them you have to create something that is. Uh, a yin and yang like one of the things was yin and yang I had to so is it like the same people blowing every time or is it like is, is it like a cake boss with glass blowing totally totally okay. so uh they have a bunch of people and they vote one person out each episode mm-hmm. that, that and it's so stressful because the glass can break they're they're blowing glass and it's getting bigger and bigger sometimes it falls it we're all watching it like but that <laughs> that show stemmed this episode because i wanted to talk to you about um how creative one person is like how can we be creative and it's something i've been thinking about a lot because we are in an artistic world Mm -hmm. by doing photographs uh we we are making art we're capturing history and sometimes you struggle with like am i being creative enough right especially when you see you know someone else's work and you're like damn wow that's amazing how did he do that how can i do that why can't why don't i do that yeah but the whole why don't is, i do that yeah. is the perfect yeah the thing is 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 again like um most of the time it you're, you're limited because everything has been done and yeah. if it hasn't been done it's brand new and then everyone will do it and it's going to fall into the world of cheesy so the vicious overdone. cycle is you have to that that's something to discuss um you there's always there's always room to improve or on an idea, maybe. I think, honestly, on a, on a true camera, out-of-camera production, you're limited by the money you have to be creative. Really? I think you could be more creative on a budget if you're Photoshopping a lot of stuff into your shot. I think if you can't afford a $10,000 backdrop, a, a $1,500 light, these certain things are going to limit your creativity. All right, but... But renting a studio, going out into the wide open area with the right, right amount there's, of people. There's the guy who Wang, I forgot his name is, but he does like uh, environmental messages. Right. He has a team of 30 people and they're building like a monster made of straws. I'll put his picture up here. Mm-hmm. But it's for like an ad campaign. Mm-hmm. And it's amazingly creative. But he has 40,000 straws. Like, right. Again, I ain't going out looking for straws. Again, I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible to be creative on a budget, but it's easier to be creative with okay. no budget. All right, so you're right. One limit is your resources. Right. So, uh, but I could say that a little photography group or a bunch of friends brainstorming could come up with something. Like, for example, maybe they want to make like a 1940 scene of a detective. Mm-hmm. Then you're, you'll probably say, that's been done. <laughs> it's been done. Everything's been done. You're right. But but you know what? They could still make that and make it creative on their own level. Now, the whole thing about creativity is you could take the same exact picture. A thousand people have taken it, but you could still add your little signature to it. True, you true. could still make it look like, hey, that's an Omar picture. I could tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. Have you heard of the people who have entered photos in contests and it's the same picture that someone else did and then they get accused of plagiarism, but it's not plagiarism? Have you heard this before? Mm-hmm. Okay, so scientists have found that um, you could see something, put it in your brain, and then it completely disappears mm-hmm. and will reappear like four years later as your own idea. And you do not remember where your idea came from. You enter it into a contest and people are like, that, <laughs> that one this four guy, years ago. This oh, guy, this guy, he took the picture and, from a year ago. Yeah, now... now Someone who wants to cheat can claim that, you know, not that there's a scientific study about it, but you can repress uh, memories and call them your own. But no, it's, it's very possible. I've, I've done it before where, I, where I've seen something, not realized, not remembered it, and then did something and then then myself remember, hey, uh, I, I know where I've seen this yeah. before, stuff like that. But in the world of photography, you're not going to, the, if you're not going to contest, everything you've done almost everyone else has done already i mean really like unless a new product comes out a new building comes out a new uh landmark comes out i don't know you're shooting, i disagree 
Oh my. I, I disagree. I think uh, people keep pushing the boundaries of, but we'll, we'll get to it. Ooh. Let us ask questions here. I got target questions oh for. My. Dios mio. All right. Question number one. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Are there levels of creativity in photography? Of course. And there's levels of creativity that you're not allowed to take depending on where you're taking your audience to. Or your genre. Right. Yeah. For instance, if you're a photojournalist and your job is to tell me the story that's actually happening as it's happening, you're limited to, to what you're you capturing. can expand yeah. on that. You, you can't you, you edit. Have to, you're going to have to take that picture and you're going to have to send it. Yeah. The only thing you want may want to do is, is brighten it, make sure you can see your subject, lift the shadows where you need to, and stuff can like that. Can you even do that? I wonder. I mean... I don't know. I think I think it's, it's like film. You can only uh, shoot... The JPEG. I, I think you could still raise the shadows in the JPEG <laughs> if you have the Sony's. But anyway. Bob, did you raise the shadows on this? <laughs> but I'm thinking like if you're trying to tell the story as it happened there, you want to present the picture as clear as possible with as little touch up as possible, if yeah. any. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, that's that's the job of the journalist. The photojournalist is to tell me the story with his picture as, as it happened. Yeah, so that you're right. There's no creativity there, but there is skill. Like right beyond right. belief skill. Like you could take the picture between three people's heads and 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 see their perspective of it and show that to me, where someone would just take the picture, you know, over everybody's head. Yeah. Or, you know, you know who rocked um, creativity in a place where there is no place being creative is Pete Souza, the Obama mm -hmm. uh, photographer. Yes, I follow him. He's awesome. He's amazing. So his his whole job is just to document the history of Obama and he his angles and his composition and his humor. Uh, he captured like an amazing. He 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 was creative, right? In a place. So he he made it those pictures actually interesting. Where any other type of photographer for that kind of business would not have been as entertaining. It would be boring. The presidents usually, no matter how exciting the president is, what they do is not yeah. normally exciting. At a desk, uh, or, I mean, yeah. Mo, he's the president. He's <laughs> like, how can he not be excited? There's not. It's just the same repetitive work Every over day. and over. Yeah. Yes, you, you get there. You you get the briefs. You sign this. You do that. Can, you I, shake hands. And he's there with babies, a camera. You know? Can you imagine? Yeah. So. He did a great job of whenever I used to go to his feet, and I still do. I, I just love his work. His great work, great eye, and mm -hmm. so that he takes a. He's kind of like the next level. So there's one where you can't be creative. Well, you can be creative, but war photographers really are at the the, the mercy, mercy of what's, of what's going, going on. on. Yeah. Let Jeez. me ask you a question. <laughs> Buy me a coke or Pepsi. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Is it if you can you say a photographer is creative if he actually makes you like his work? That the work stands out enough that you say you like it? Well, it depends on your definition of creativity. So I, my definition of creativity is where it's like something fresh and new. Mm -hmm. But I could love a photographer that has uh, someone in front of like a white wall mm -hmm. and the lighting is just great and the person's expression is great. You know, like some portrait of someone. Is that creative? That's what I was going to say. Wouldn't that fall into creativity? Because he's taking the same concept that everyone else has done it, but he's doing it in a way that you actually, it sticks out to you and you actually like it more than someone else. Well, I think maybe in the past when there weren't that many photographs around, yes, mm -hmm. the masters taking beautiful portraits, but now everyone can do you know, um, anyone with a cheap young yo mm, young yo can do one mm. light portraits. You know it what I mean? Sponsored by. Sponsored by young yo. Be your <laughs> anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I think part of part of the definition of creativity comes from my own struggle because I take I uh, pat myself on the back. I take beautiful portraits that parents love. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't love a portrait of their child? You know. Right. Yeah. So their their kids look epic. The lighting is fantastic. But I'm not shooting from like in the sewer out, you know. <laughs> I'm not riding under the horse. Right. I don't have a crane that's right. following the kids' soccer game. That goes back to the budget, right? You can't afford to do those things True. for health wise either. But well, 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 look. Recently, we went to an old theater. We had to rent out the theater, mm -hmm. and that was that was more beautiful, you know. And there was creativity because I used the ceiling and stuff. But this discussion is coming from a place of. Am I creative enough? And I think we all struggle with that. I think we go from, hey, I could take a pretty picture, or am I making a picture? I think I think based on what you're doing, you're limited to your creativity. Events. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. well, in general, your portraits, your, your events, you're not doing Omar portraits. Yeah. You're doing portraits for mom and dad. Yeah, yeah. You're limited to, you need to give them what's tried and true, 
and you could you could expand upon it. You could add some fl- some Omar flair to it, but you still got to deliver the You're goods. Right, because if you if, push the creativity and the strangeness, if I too said much, Omar, I need you to create a portrait mural of this for me in two weeks. Yeah. Your brain is going to be juicy and flowing, and yeah. you're going to come up with a thousand ideas before you finally come up with something that you're going to say this is going to stand out, and I'm going to blow this away. But that's because it's it's a project it's that's a near process, and dear to you, a project, yeah. Not because you're doing it for someone else's money. Yeah. It's, it's a big difference. You're limited because you also you, you could again you could be flourish. Flourish is a good word because if someone's like, we need pictures of the kid soccer. Well, then you try to work you angles make them, and you can make the balls go on fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I that mean, was my idea. Was the you, kid? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So. You you have a ability to deliver the goods, plus you're still creative. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you'd be one thousand percent creative if you had a project of your own. Yeah, that's true. All right, so levels of what about? Let me ask you this because we said there's levels. We know that the level, the lowest level, is you're just capturing history. The highest level has to be like unicorns. <laughs> with uh, where'd that greenhouse come from? <laughs> He's in New greenhouse. York City. <laughs> yes, New York. It's a uh, you know, so there's people that do in what I call inception photography mm-hmm. or deep fantasy photography. Right. And that is, I think, completely different ballpark than right. what I'm talking about. Right. That's still creative. That's, that's still, really creative. That's, that's artistically creative where you're actually taking a photo and you're now telling, uh, you could tell a dark story. You could tell a fun, whimsical story. Or you could just make it dr- creepy. You know, like, it's just like, you <laughs> have the ability. Vision. You have your... the ability to do whatever you want with one photo. But again, that's not natural nine or ten times. That's yeah. a lot of Photoshop. Photoshop, yeah. The guy who has his two kids, there's like a the there's a dad who takes pictures of his two girls. Mm-hmm. And, and I'll put a couple of pictures up here. They're hilarious. They're like super creative. Is our battery going to die? Oh, my. We got our battery. Let's change our battery. All right. We'll be right back. Right. We're talking about the, the guy with the two girls. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Okay. Oh, yeah. So there's a dad who takes uh, pictures of his daughters, and, and they're always funny. Like one of, you know, oversized Nutella containers, mm-hmm. all Photoshop stuff, but really creative. He had one where one sister taped the other sister to the wall. I've seen him. Yeah, yes, yeah. Yes. Now that you say that, yeah. Yeah. That was funny. Them doing laundry, things like that. So he has to think of a concept and then, you know, hash it out. It's very Ooh. inspirational. Very inspirational. I, I think uh, once I saw that, I was like, how can I create this? But but, all right, but, but, go. but my son didn't want to be. Uh, oh, he didn't want to. <laughs> He's like, here's I'm not going to be a girl. <laughs> here's my segue number two. When, Mo Morales, were you most creative? Think of a photograph that maybe you made or produced or, you know, that was an output of creativity. So, beating a dead horse. Um, I have multiple scrolls. You have a picture of a dead yeah, horse? Yes, I'm beating him up really good. <laughs> Photoshop! You will learn tonight. <laughs> That's awkward. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. So um, I have multiple sclerosis and, and I go through ups and downs. And I find that when I'm telling stories about what I go through, I tend to try to be creative there. You um, have like a concept in mind I have to a portray in my mind, how you feel? Yeah. Right. I, I took a picture one time where uh, I had my very first relapse. It was my my horse. It, was, it wasn't the worst, but my first really bad experience with it. And when I came out of it and I felt better and I, my, my mind was thinking clearly and I was being able to get back into photography and stuff, I took a picture of myself coming out of my own mouth. Wait, this is, you took the picture after your concept? Well, yeah. Well, once I felt, once I was feeling better, I wanted to, I wanted to say something. I wanted oh, to put so a you message. Were, you're out already there. creating it, right? Yeah. So in my mind, I wanted to show the rebirth of the process. I had just felt like I died, and I was being born again into the new reality of my life, knowing what I'm going to be dealing with. Oh, now. got it. So got it. it wasn't like you feeling better of being born. Is you're like this is the new mo, right? And yeah. this, but but this is where I accepted the positive of it. Like you know, this is what it is. Let's move forward. Let's just kick it to ass and keep yeah. moving forward. And what I did was I had myself you know with my head tilted back and my mouth open with a new me coming out of my mouth and i thought it was pretty cool um i had man boobs in it though but uh i thought it was pretty cool i mean i was i was i was should have split the head and i was like out the, of shape i, yeah, I didn't yeah. want to photoshop my abs in you know <laughs> all right cool so mine um as far as like the most creative we are is what it's like holiday card time mm-hmm. because we like to make funny holiday cards so the kids were in in the picture. The kids were opening up gifts. So my son was opening up an Iron Man suit. My daughter was opening up like a real polar bear, mm-hmm. and I had a huge iPad Max. One of my favorites. <laughs> and then my wife just had socks. Was the joke. <laughs> so like we sketched everything out, right. 
and then photo, uh, photoshopped it all in. And I actually made a photograph. Like I remember like feeling good about that. And then when we went to the Tour de France that year, we photoshopped ourselves all on a bicycle, the four of us in the Tour de France winning it. <laughs> With the yellow <laughs> so jersey the, Yeah, yeah. So, that, so I'll put those up if I find them. But uh, I felt creative making a photograph instead of taking I think I want to. You have another one. You said oh, I have a, a couple, but I'll just one more. Um, the the Mo dinner. The oh, I dinner love that. With, I call that dinner with the Mo's. We should might, make we, more of those. We we might have seen that one, but um, I, for some reason, I, here, here's the whole story. Okay, luckily I can't get fired after the fact. Okay. I was at work, uh, working home from lunch. In in I just working just, home from lunch. I was working home from lunch. I was so hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I was home working. Yeah, yeah. And during my lunch time. I just it just hit me of taking multiple pictures of myself. Creative right there. And it just came out of nowhere. And I said to myself, if I don't do it right this moment, I'm gonna forget it later. And I just took uh, I you put my camera on I put my camera on the tripod, set the timer on it, and took pictures of myself in like six or seven different positions. <laughs> and then and then I photoshopped it all together. And honestly, before my lunch hour was over, that picture was done. It was the fastest, you most creative thing I ever did Let's, in my whole life. I love it. Let's tell our audience right now, if you're feeling in a creative rut, like do a you picture. Because mm-hmm. you showed me some of, of someone working out. Right. Right. You show me like double people you do. Right. So uh, again, I, I like to, I love to tell messages in my photos. So I did a picture of a uh, uh, high school friends of ours. One of them was name was Jay. And actually they're both named Jay, but one Jay, um, he, uh, he's into, um, damn it. Dessert making. M- mixed martial arts. What's that? Uh, <laughs> MMA. He's into MMA to a small degree. Okay. And, um, the message was, it was him fighting himself in the picture I took. And it was actually him. He posed for all these photos, and I just picked the ones I liked the best. And I made a photo, and, and the message of the photo was, remember, you have to be your toughest opponent. Oh, that's cool. And, and I think your caption makes it. That's and nice. then the second one, um, the other Jay, he runs a personal training facility for um, you know Cross Fitness and Sea Caucus. And it's him spotting himself, yelling that, at himself uh, to uh. push the weight up higher. And again, my message in that one was something along the lines that you have to be, you have to remember that you have to be toughest on yourself to get to where you want to be. That's cool. Yeah, see, that's so, cool. Did you feel creative? I did. And, I know. and, and they love those pictures. I, you know? I think part of my rut comes from that. Uh, I love beautiful portraits, don't get me wrong, but there isn't really much. Once you get the light down that's beautiful and the person styled beautifully and you capture them, I feel it's gorgeous, mm-hmm. but it's it's not pushing that little button of, hey, I made something. Right, and that goes it's, to what I said to you before. These were personal projects I asked people to take yeah. part in that I knew would love the message. And I, I think I need, like how you were so excited talking just now about the pictures you made, mm-hmm. I think I do need a personal project that I'm working on on the side that really gives, gets me going uh, to, to sort of like put that beast away, you know, the beast that, that keeps creeping up, like be more creative, be more creative. And I think that's, that's, that's again, goes back to your uh, level of, of thinking. You always, you always are not, you don't ever want to plateau and your fear of life is plateauing. Yeah, you're and right. I think, I think once you get past the point that, that you're not a plateau or you're just a, you're just what I call a, a, a mountain skipper. So you get to the top of the mountain, but then you don't realize that there's more mountain. Yeah, yeah. You always think that you get to the top and that's it. No, there's so much more mountain in this world that you have to just keep climbing, walk for a little while. That's oh, a great point. there it is. There's that's more mountain. Point. All right, next question. You ready? Yeah. All right, next question. Mm-hmm. Can someone become more creative and how? Yes. I think you're wrong. I think you can become no, more creative if you just open yourself up to the fact that you haven't been creative. Yeah. If you've accepted that you're the greatest thing on the face of the earth and there's nothing you can or learn. Or you've plateaued and you're good. Yeah. Plateaued, then, then you're not going to be receptive to be more creative. You're just going to keep putting out the same thing you know it is. And the, and the, and the best way to become creative, as is, is weird as this going to sound, is by looking at other people's work. I was about to say... Because what it's, you want to do, what, what are you going to say? Well, go ahead, finish. And what, what you want to do is you want to learn other points of view to then bring into your point of view. Which I was going to play devil's advocate, looking at other people's work, it could become overwhelming. 
where it could stifle your creativity with this this tsunami of ideas. How long have you been photographing things? So you two weeks? like ten years. Two weeks? No, no, I know. All right, so here's the thing: you have the, to, you have do to. Do you see where I'm coming from? Right. First of all, if won't you're, that paralyze someone that no, is like? Stop. If you're a brand new photographer, and I mean someone shooting for less than two years, and you're you're going to be paralyzed and intimidated no, by I'm, other people's work then then you're 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 looking at this the wrong way you're still in the learning phase you're a puppy in all the right but what about someone like me that's been at it for a while i sometimes well, get overwhelmed with you, like damn. you should you should get overwhelmed you as a as a professional photographer as a per- person who's been taking photos for 10 years professionally and and more years for fun yeah you should look at other people's work and go wow because i want that's be impressive that. yeah. Yeah. and you should then say what do i have to do to yeah. get there. What do I like about that photo that I want to put my flair on? Yeah, yeah. Why did I say wow about that picture? Yeah. If it's a natural picture, then you can definitely do something about making your creative juice create something in that world. If it's a Photoshop picture, don't even worry about it. You know, <laughs> honestly, unicorn. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, to me, honestly, I, I appreciate photos that have immense and deep levels of Photoshop and, and make me go wow, it's a neat picture. But in the levels of trying to compete against that, no. All right, so let me answer. I love what you said. Uh, let me answer the question real quick, but I want to. I'm going to jump off something you said. Um, uh, becoming more creative, I think you need to. Yes, look at other people's work, but I was going to take a little idea from Stephen King, mm-hmm. who writes the most amazing novels. Favorite Stephen King? Um, the Shining. Yes. Mm-hmm. Reading The Shining was one of the greatest things I ever did. I was going to say Misery, too. Misery was one of the first ones I've read. Uh, I, th- I think I read Christine. I read all of them in order. But Misery was the first one that was just scared me the most, I think, mm. because I think one of my fears is being trapped maybe in a room with some crazy with lady. for too long. <laughs> Eat your vegetables. Oh, my God. Anyway, so Stephen King talked about how he, in his when he wanted to be most creative, he had the same routine every time. He would make a cup of tea. He would sit in a corner of the room, no sounds, and he would close his eyes and like think and let it come to him. And I think a lot of our like modern creativity comes from like trying to Google and absorb and where really you should shut everything off. And how many have you had a time where you're kind of like maybe you're not on your phone and you're sitting there and like something will spark up? You'll think of something that you either need to do or is it? (laughs) My beard got caught on the mic. Oh, I thought you were like, oh, I got to take care of my beard. No, no, my beard. I just pulled back and I felt <laughs> Click. <laughs> yeah. So I have that happen sometimes where you're just sitting. Sometimes it's good to just sit and cr- let your brain uh, percolate. That works for you. Again, my my big Mo dinner uh, photo shoot happened while I was working. And then I knew my lunch was coming up. So I was already multitasking because when in, in, in my job, if you're not multitasking, you're not working. You're just sitting there, you know. Right. So I think if if my most creative moments come from doing 3,000 things, but if I don't act on it, that's where my penalty comes in. Yeah. I have to definitely either write it down right away or I'm going to lose it if I don't do it. So yeah, that's a good point. Your, your thing about different. silence is, 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 you know, works too. But I've never tried that because I don't know how to be in a silent world. Uh, I Well, that's the... That's the thing is if you start trying it, like sitting somewhere, you realize you start to get antsy because uh, the screens are off. But if you just wait long enough, you will start, things will percolate. You'll start, your brain will start going in places and you can come up with a project or an idea. Some of my uh, best YouTube videos come from that where I just like pop, it pops in a second and I record right away. So cool. Okay. Uh, let's, we're, we're, this is the fun part of the show where we share things that were creative were then so loved that they started to be overdone and are now cheesy give me one that i did no no that the photographers you oh. know a someone thought of something that was cute we we talked about that briefly but the the lens ball all right yes the, even i've used the lens ball yeah. uh, but i've actually used it the right way i i I mean granted the lens ball is automatically a reflex of what you're seeing yeah yeah, so it's already upside down a a reflex of what you already seen and i hate that so every time i use it i flip my picture over because it's still creative it's still using the ball but everyone uses that ball all right i'll give you two quick ones number one people love to blow sprinkles into the camera for Mm -hmm. bokeh that that's being killed um, a great idea. Whoever thought of it first was like, "What?" You know who else too? That that woman leading her boyfriend. 
what the arm thing yeah where yeah. the like, girl's reaching back for her boyfriend yeah everyone yeah. does that everyone's like, doing that now like my father did that on instagram <laughs> and you know i'm like come on pops what about uh the other one that's funny is um everyone seems to be doing reflections on their phones now have you seen this so, oh, maybe you should try it. Is this the, I seen this, I think, but I think I seen this because Peter McNally, what's his name? Peter uh, McKinnon. McKinnon. Peter McKinnon. Peter McNally. McNally. He's like two people on <laughs> once. <laughs> I would, I would subscribe to that. Yeah, it's the, uh, it's where you take your camera like this and you see the Eiffel Tower reflection, like if it's water, mm-hmm. and then you you put your camera here and you have two Eiffel Towers. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, something like that he did, but it wasn't exactly that. But no, I'm not seeing it. All right, so maybe that one's not as bad as the pregnant you woman look at heart. More photos though, Aww. you look more photos all the time though totally. than I do. Yeah, the the, the pregnant heart. The pregnant heart the has pregnant to stop. Heart, no, it's it's cute for the kids. Yeah, it's cute for the first timer. Oh yeah, explain that. That, for the parents so so again we we do the work we do and why we do it we do it for the parents we do it for the parents that are going to love everything you give them of their kid even if yeah, them, to them it's not overdone no, they want it they that's what they want they want to be able to tell look Susie, look what omar <laughs> did for me he did it for me <laughs> is that susan no <laughs> We we're just calling her Susie, Susie today. Now, code word. So Susie, uh, train tracks totally overdone. People on train tracks uh, was popular because of the train tracks look beautiful. They're leading, leading lines. lines. Yeah. I love leading lines. Jinx. And uh, girls with fur. I'm guilty of that one. A, the fur. The last two ones I've done in the last uh, six the winter. Months. Yeah. yeah, because the fur looks beautiful. It's great texture and it frames the person's face. So that one's so overdone. And um, selective coloring. For a long time, was that was taboo, wasn't it? People, it, it was shunned. cool at first. Yeah, but then they started shunning you. Well, everyone did it, and then they, then when it, I went to Creative Live. What? How many years ago? Six, seven years ago. People, yeah. people were like, no selective coloring to get that out of here. Yeah. So, and I mean, those those are those, those are people in Seattle who knew what they're talking about. It's gonna come back. I'm bringing it, it back. Is, yeah, it's like bring it back. <laughs> a red bring rose. It back. I've and, actually used selective coloring once, mm-hmm. uh, and it was because everything was blue except for mom's shoes. They were like the brightest red. And it was like a thing that day. Mm. So I took the color out of everything and just left her shoes. Sucked the color out of it all. <laughs> yeah, There yeah. you go. Enjoy my red, baby. <laughs> totally. All right. So my last one is kind of like related to what I'm going through. Um, so we we see a plethora of beautiful mm. models. Big word. Plethora. <laughs> Socio. <laughs> beautiful models, beautiful backlight, beautiful high-speed sync, uh, amazing, amazing photos. But can portraiture, where can we take portraiture? Can portraiture be creative? Because there's so many beautiful pictures. Let's just say it, women. Mm-hmm. Because most photographers that are uh, gear and, and you know lights and all that, the majority are men. Mm-hmm. And so the audience is, is you know, liking these photos. And so it's, it's sort of, uh, what's the word? Perpetuating it's the whole. Cycle. Yeah, it's a vicious cycle. It's like more men are liking so more men are doing. Mm-hmm. So the popular thing now is beautiful women with beautiful light. When can that be creative or is that creativity? Let's go back to 18 BC. Okay. <laughs> when they were painting on the walls. The cavemen were trying to create the same thing with women that we're doing today. Okay. It, it's just that will always be an accepted beauty you can't do anything capturing, about capturing okay capturing a i don't woman's think that's beauty. what i'm discussing Painting. i no, know what you're talking about i know i'm gonna get there yeah right i'm gonna walk you around the block with this go one. go go all right so again the mona lisa the, the this the that you and you and it's always been trying to capture it so how do you do it in a unique way can you really at this point omar can you capture a woman in a way that's creative and you know without looking through a plant without coming off the top of a ceiling yeah, you know yeah. you have to go completely off the walls to be creative in that aspect and once you go that creative in a portrait are you still a portrait photographer yeah now you're in the fantasy world like you're doing a 360 picture of a woman or something right like, like you make her a planet creative. you know yeah. <laughs> those little you round make- ball planets that are creep imagine that <laughs> <laughs> her foot is in her mouth. <laughs> that she's a circle. Tasty. No, I, I think uh I think that's where I'm struggling with is like uh I I don't think uh, there's there's creativity maybe in your light, let's say, uh or how you use light, but you're right, capturing a beautiful person in beautiful light with beautiful colors is like painting, like you say, the wall painting. And that kind of makes me sad. 
There's nothing to be sad about because you're still pre- we're still able to present that in a way that people will enjoy it and take it in. You're right. The only the only problem you have with it is that you can't put your own spin on it, but you can. And I was thinking about I was gonna say, oh, you could dress them up in a certain way, but then someone else has probably dressed them up in that certain yeah. way. So I mean, there's very limited ways to show. Beauty. I think we it, we say it's limited because we haven't cracked that wall of creativity. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I think someone like me saying. This is all we could do. Mm-hmm. I feel like I haven't sat down and come up with the, the the thing I need to feel creative. You know what I mean? So that's your assignment starting now before the end of the year. Why are you giving me homework? Because you are so <laughs> bad at finishing projects or getting on projects. No, I don't, I don't think it's a project. I'm thinking in my own work and even in the midst for work and the portraits. You have to create it first in, in, in a project because... If you don't, you're going to be testing it in, in, in an environment that's not conducive yeah, right. to... Well, I've already been dabbling with the, the you bringing flashes on location. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think that's it. That, that's my next step is to stop just being lazy light, you know, uh, natural light photographer. But, but you've, never been, you've never been the lazy natural light photographer. Yeah, you, you're right. You, you, you know, you've, you've just been, uh, you just appreciate natural light more. Yeah, there's certain people out there that you know they don't they they fear speed lights, they fear Einstein's, they fear the pro photos. So those are the people that need to step up the game by getting out into the speed world. You're you're not that guy. Yeah, I I love him. You can tell I always defend him, right? I know you're you've been great therapy for me, and I and honestly just to unveil a little bit, I I really am. This is like my off season. So in the off season, I always contemplate. You know, as soon as September comes, I start r- r- hustling again. And I always want to get better. It's always been that way is I want to get better. And it's kind of like a little bit of a drug. Sometimes like you think a piece of gear is where you're headed. You're like, I got the light. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be better. And I'm realizing now that I need to uh, work the brain. I need to actually start thinking of new angles, new looks, new new focal lengths. You know, people are shooting more wide portraits now. Mm -hmm. I'm still on my 8500 for portraits. But uh, people are starting to experiment with 200. That's pretty tight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the moon. Oh, goodness. <laughs> you stand on that roof. I'm going to go down five blocks. Just look, down, 8, look down. Look yeah. down. Okay. 8,500. I can't hold it steady. <laughs> I got four tripods. Oh, you made me sweat on that one. I know. I'm sweating. This is hot in here. But do you get what I'm saying? Yes. So, uh, uh, but, but again, it comes uh, just to go back a step because you said that... Um, you can't be creative with like just shooting a beautiful woman. But some of the masters who do some of these uh, celebrity portraits of people, you could see so much from the person's eyes. You know, they're working something out of those people. And that's their creativity. Right. But they... the creativity isn't the picture. It's how they got the picture. I know. So, again, you, you want to start putting two lights on one, one person's side. Guess what? That's been done. You want to put a ring light in front of me. Yeah. That's been done. I mean. So you're saying the creativity is like, hey, the essence of this person is like there or the pose is amazing. That's Think, think about this. That same person you're talking about, whoever that photographer that came to mind when you mentioned that, that guy took 80 pictures. Yeah. That's the one that worked. Yeah, yeah. You know what that 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 rising smile that we always talk about? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that that that's what the guy got. He got that moment within the set of photos he wanted. What about the guy who makes you look like deer in the headlights with a wide? You know, he made choices. He's right. like, he's, he's, you know, yeah. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> There's always that guy. Oh, you're creative. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, that's what I'm saying. it's so open to interpretation. Creativity isn't isn't mean you're good. Well, it it doesn't mean you're good to you. Right. You could have a white canvas with a blue. You know, you know what? You know what? I think I'm gonna start doing my new, my new. I'm gonna set this going forward. All right, white. I'm gonna take super <laughs> duper white background, and I'm gonna have the person dress in all white. So only thing that shows is his face. This is a floating face. Yes, yeah, a floating that, face. Who's the guy who does the floating face portraits? Oh, Mo Morales. <laughs> He's a weirdo. Yeah. You know, a, a couple of things I did when I was doing some some uh, bedroom photography, I would put a clock, the same clock in the background at 512. Really? Yeah. I you, did that. You did little Easter eggs yeah, in your photos. I did that. I did that for like three different shoots, and and then I realized no one's looking at my work. 
so no one's gonna notice it. But if I are do, you the five twelve guy? But I still have the 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 clock, the old fashioned alarm clock looking thing. Yeah, I still have it. And if I go back into boudoir or any type of bedroom type work, I'm gonna definitely keep using That's that. Cool. What's because the five twelve? Five twelve twelve is my birthday. Uh, but I just thought that it was a cool thing when I saw it by mistake. In the background, it said 512. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to keep that. That's a thing. So now I'm in. You know? Yeah, yeah. I got to think of something. I got to think of some hook. Yeah. No. Anyway, <laughs> this was really fun. I Thank you for giving me therapy. Uh, I definitely will do the Stephen King silence, and I want to come up with, with new ideas and stuff. And um, I think part of it might be, too, to go out and shoot together. Remember we were in Hoboken, and we were trying to talk about angles. and I think that was too, too worked. I think we need to get there early. Yeah, and just 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 relax and just have a great relax. day. I think we were we we're trying too hard to tell stories of Hoboken that day. You're right. You're right. I, I think we see. So just... sometimes a project, it, it's like you could drive yourself crazy. Well, a we project, had a project, a project that we haven't seen each other in a couple of days, a, a couple of weeks at that point. It was a project. We were hungry. There was a lot of things going wrong. <laughs> we were in Hoboken. It was it was it was Fiore's roast beef day. You know, it's so funny. It's like a project will drive your creativity. And we're like <laughs> roast beef and mud, I'm son. Starving. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right buddy i'll see you man we'll see you guys next time uh, peace <laughs> that was it goodbye get out of here <laughs>